Hello everybody, welcome to another Usako Bronze question. My name is Jimmy Ong, I am a course developer and instructor at Coding Minds Academy, and today we're looking at the Usako Bronze question triangles from the 2020 February contest. So on the screen you'll see the question itself, go ahead and pause and read through it. There'll also be a link in the description below. Alright, let's go ahead and see what this question is asking us to do. So Farmer John wants to create a triangular pasture for his cows. And our goal is to figure out what is the largest area he can create by creating three points on a 2D map. So it's not going to be just any triangle, it needs to be a specific type of triangle. So in the question it says one side must be parallel to the x-axis and the other side must be parallel to the y-axis. From this we can actually extrapolate a few things. First of all, this triangle is going to be a right triangle. The second thing is to have a valid corner in a valid triangle. The corner must have an x-coordinate that matches the x-coordinate of another point. And the corner must have a y-coordinate that matches the y-coordinate of another point. So what does this mean? Let's go ahead and take a look at an example. So this triangle that I'm drawing right now is giving me an example of a valid triangle. We can see that the x-axis is parallel to one of the sides, and one of the sides is parallel to the y-axis. We can also see here for this uh, corner that the x-coordinate matches up with a point of another x-coordinate. And the y-coordinate matches up with another point's y-coordinate. So if it's a valid triangle, its corner will have these properties. Let's take another look at another valid triangle. So this time the triangle's corner is not at the origin, however one side is still parallel to the x-axis and the other side is parallel to the y-axis, so this is a valid triangle. And you can see the corner has the same properties as well. So the corner's x-coordinate is shared with another point, and the corner's y-coordinate is shared with the other point. Lastly, let's take a look at a triangle that is not valid, that is incorrect. So with this triangle, there is one side that's parallel to the y-axis, but there's no sides that are parallel to the x-axis, so it's not a valid triangle. So let's jump right into the code. So we can use the properties of the valid triangle and the valid corner that we just talked about in order to help us solve the problem. Here's our game plan. You want to loop through all the possible triples of three points and check to see if they're a valid triangle. Once again, a valid triangle will have one side that's parallel to the x-axis and another side that'll be parallel to the y-axis. So we're going to figure out what the area is for all of these valid triples and figure out what the largest area will be. And here's a note, according to the problem, we're going to multiply the area by two. So instead of doing one half base times height, it would rather be just base times height. Here's my sample input. So this is the input from the uh, problem itself. And what we're going to do now is write a little helper function to help us read the data. So the first line of the sample output is going to be n, the amount of points that we have. And we actually will need to use that a little bit later on. After that, I'll read in the rest of the data and split them up and create two lists, one for the x-coordinates and one for the y-coordinates. So we can get away with these two lists here because, for example, the x-coordinate in the 0th spot 
corresponds to the y coordinate in the zeroth spot. And what I'm doing here is processing the rest of the information. So when we take in the data, they'll be given as a string of two numbers and a space. So for example, first one would be zero, space zero. Next one would be zero, space one. So we actually don't want these to be strings. We want these to be integers so we can work with them. So what I'm doing here is just a little bit of list comprehension and just casting it into an integer. That way we can use it later on. Also an important thing to notice is for this question, the numbers are just one digit long, but for the other USACO, for the other test cases, there could be negative numbers and there could be longer numbers. So after we finish processing them and casting the data, we're going to add the coordinates into the X and Y lists. And then finally, we'll return all the data that we processed. And with that, we're done with processing the data. We can move on to the meat of the question. So first of all, I'm going to create a max area variable to keep a running count of what our current max is. We'll set it equal to zero because there will probably be a area that's greater than zero. And then after that, I'm going to use a triple for loop. So our game plan here is just going to be brute forcing all the possible combinations. Right, so maybe not all the combinations will yield a valid triangle, but we can go through all of them one by one and check to see if they do. And we're okay to brute force in this situation because of the limitations on the number of fence posts. So it'll be a minimum of three to make a triangle, but it'll be a maximum of 100. So 100 cubed, which would be the big O for this triple for loop, 100 cubed would be a million uh, inputs. So a million does seem like a lot, but the computer can do that very snappily. So the time complexity on this isn't too bad. So what these variables i, j, and k will stand for is i will be the um, index for the valid corner, j will be the index for the side with the same x as i, and k will be the side with the same y as i. So remember, this triple for loop here is to exhaustively brute force all combinations. So we need to stick a for loop, uh, sorry, an if statement here to see if the conditions we need match up, which are one side parallel to the x-axis and one side parallel to the y-axis. And that's what I'm doing right here. So I'm just checking to see if the y coordinate matches up with one of the sides and the x coordinate matches up on one of the other sides. So all I'm doing here is finding the difference between the y coordinates and the difference between the x coordinates, so base and height. And multiplying those two numbers together will give me the result of that specific triangle. Once we have the area for that specific triangle, the last thing we need to do is to compare it to our max area to see if the current triangle's area is larger than the largest area we've seen before. So if this is the first iteration, it will almost always replace our current max area, which would be zero or negative one, or even uh, the negative max of integers. So the negative one or zero is just a placeholder. And we can see here that we get the right answer. 
The very last thing we need to do is just write to file. So nothing special here, just the same three lines we were used to. All right, and that'll be the question. So this was the USACO bronze question from the February 2020 contest, Triangles, presented to you by Jimmy Ong. Check out my resume and blog in the description. Thanks for watching.